everybody, I'm Kirsten. I'm Clea. Welcome to Casey Cafe. Um, how dyslexia affects reading and spelling, right? Because it's in math and that's all we do here. But this, yeah. I think it's um, fun to talk about too, the stuff that happens because of your sequencing issues or your auditory processing yeah. that um, sometimes people don't think about when they're thinking about, oh, I'm dyslexic. How is this? It affects my life in other ways. And the other thing that we were talking about too the other day was yeah. that when you're done with this, like you tend to test as not being dyslexic anymore. So people think, oh, you're you're cured. <laughs> but you still are going to have to deal with all the other <laughs> dyslexic stuff for the rest of your life. So um, I don't know, like some stuff that happens to me. I think we were, oh yeah, at the end of the night after we've been reading and I go to talk to you and we're like, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and you like can't talk anymore. It's so hard to talk. Like, it's just like, and you feel in your head, like, I know what I'm trying to say. And, and then, it just like, doesn't come out. Yeah. And there's nothing that's going to get it to come out. And like, I don't know how, I don't know if that happens to neurotypical people that you're like, yeah. gee, I'm sure feeling tired. Now I can't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think even too, like if I'm tired or I'm like I'm hungry, I'm always just like, hey, that thingy over there, the thing, like I can't, like that word retrieval, I can't, yeah. like, I'm just trying so hard to get all of that out. And you're just kind of like pointing. Yeah. <laughs> Some shreds. Give me that. Yeah, that's And getting hangry <clears throat> is like the absolute worst. Yeah, I think being hangry is the worst, I think, because I love food. <laughs> I think everybody does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's like your blood sugar dips and you just kind of want to rage out do you ever get too like when you're when you like the hungry you are the more clumsy you are oh for sure i'm super clumsy <laughs> but i don't know if that's because i'm i'm like i have erlin so my depth perception is always too. off but i feel like that's where <laughs> just bumping into things i'm like oh sorry <laughs> so you what talents did you get like you used to play baseball yeah i play baseball i, I really love sports yeah i'm really good at art yeah I think that's one of, like, the highest qualities, I think, for me that's, like, helped me through so much has just been through, like, painting and, like, creating and, you know, it was kind of weird, actually, because when I did finish um, the program, it was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> pouring it down the side of my life. When I did finish the program, though, like, I, I really struggled with, like, I can't create anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that was, I feel like I've become so literate where, like, reading and spelling isn't difficult for me anymore. But then trying to like paint something, I'm like, how do I paint this? Like, what do I think of to draw or to paint? And that was so I think I still kind of feel like I have that struggle. So I feel like I have to work harder at building that back. Do you know if that makes out, sense? Like, where do you start from? Yeah. As you're going, yeah. Uh, no, that makes sense, I guess, because you're like, the reading and spelling part would, would be like, okay, here's how to organize. So yeah. before you just kind of let that artistic feeling take over and go. Yeah. I don't I I feel like I got the artistic part but I definitely did not get the sports part as <laughs> as I just poured my water down the side of my face. I am so uncoordinated and I find myself like I have to think a lot about my movements. Like I don't I <laughs> you may know this if you know me, I don't run. <laughs> I never run. I can manage a somewhat okay jog. But as soon as it's like, okay, you got like, as soon as I have to do that, watching me run is insane. Like, sometimes I'm like, okay, and I'm running and just my legs are moving. And my arms are straight <laughs> arms. Or, like, I'm like, oh, right, I have to move my arms. So I start moving my arms, and then I try to, like, step twice forward with the same, like, like nothing. I do, oh your arms, gosh. your legs, everything is just no. not going the same way. And I think it was really too, like, when I was a kid playing soccer, like, I sat in the field. <laughs> And people would run past me, and I'd be like, good job! <laughs> and then they run back, and my coach would be screaming, good job! <laughs> and I'd be like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm because here. I've never in my life run. Um, I feel like I was lucky, though, because like a lot of people are like, oh, she's the fat kid. She's not going to run. So I was like, not expected <laughs> to run. So you're just like, yeah, I'm just yeah, going to make some flower hats. Yeah, I'm like, that's what it is. It's like, I'm just like, I got asthma. You, you guys do the run. It's like that I can't. Oh my gosh. But I feel like it's good that you still tried, though. You know, yeah, I feel like you still yeah. tried and you were like, you know what, this isn't for me, right? And I did, like, like I said, I got to a jog. Like, it took yeah. a lot of years <laughs> of me being like, okay. And I know when I went to physio after, like, ruptured my Achilles tendon, too, my physiotherapist was like, I could see her something being like, what is wrong with you? So I'd be like, going, heel, toe, <laughs> heel, toe. But no, I definitely, like, I don't know, the gifts are good. I guess I like being really smart, <laughs> I like being creative. Um, 
it would be nice. Nice to know where my mouth is <laughs> when I'm eating and drinking. <laughs> that would be awesome. So you don't just like yeah, just what other kind of stuff do you Yeah, I feel like I, I feel like one thing for me, like I'm really competitive, right? Mm. And I think that's maybe because I lacked in other areas, so I tried to like, you know, like compensate, you know, and I feel like that's where when I was like, you know, playing sports or like I always was like, Hey, I gotta be the first one to win or <laughs> I have to be you know, I was like really competitive. Yeah. And I don't know if that was just like maybe like me being insecure about like having issues with reading and spelling. So I was just like, Well, I'm good at this and right and mm -hmm. I think I had to just like work better at um you know, like running and working out, like that was a really good relief for me. But I also think too, like, um, like as I've gotten older, like I've kind of gone to now like more spiritual things, right? Like I've kind of figured out how to emotionally deal with some of the stuff because mm -hmm. I have really great qualities with art and that's so peaceful, but I can't always be doing art or always be working out. Like yeah. I wanted to see something else, right? Yeah. So I think that like, going into something more spiritual was kind of just interesting for me. But it makes sense too, right? Because like you don't, you don't really think about the kind of the damage that yeah. and the trauma from school, right? Like, yeah. Because you knew you were trying your absolute hardest, but nobody else knew. Yeah, you know? and like, I think me trying to work like ten times harder, no one ever knew that I was working like yeah. so much, like ten times harder than everybody else. And it like took so much energy out of me. I was like, why do I feel so tired? Why do I feel like I have no energy? Yeah. And that was because I was working so hard. I just got to read this book and that was just like, took the life out of me yeah. basically, right? I think I'm like the so, only, I remember always people being like, uh, like, oh, I can never read in the car because it makes me sick or whatever. I remember I used to, like, that was what I do. I'd grab out a book yeah. and I'd start reading and so I'd just be like, bang. Like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm gonna sleep. <laughs> just like read a few pages and my brain's like, I, th I think that's one funny thing though when I did read though I I, I would pretend to read like I make up my own stories because I'm like oh, whatever I'm just not gonna do this so I'd make up like my own stories and people would be like Kirsten that's not how you read <laughs> like that's not the book I'm like yeah it is like, this book was amazing <laughs> but I, I always think back though to like I, I remember in like grade four or something we had we had to read to the younger kids right we had like story book time so we'd go down to like the grade one class and we'd like pick a partner and I'd always be so nervous like oh my god like what if this grade one -er could read better than me like you know so like I would always just like try my best and then I'd be like no let's just not read the book let's just talk right and then we would just be talking and then the teacher would be like hey you guys are getting in trouble like <laughs> I'm like but we're doing story time like we're making us making our own stories and I always thought that was more interesting than <laughs> And it, right, I think that's awesome too because you're yeah. like going as a little kid, you're seeing another little kid, and you're like, let's create our own thing. And it's like, I love that. And it comes like that well of creativity, right? Yeah. Like, I feel like a lot of adaptations are just you being a creative lateral thinker when yeah. you have dyslexia. Oh, I don't think that I would <laughs> possibly want to do without it. The fact that if I put something in a drawer, it's like I chucked it down a black hole. Like if I put some, if I don't have label on the drawer, mm -hmm. like if I put something away, I actually this weekend came home with. Um, I was like, man, I gotta get some lemons. I, I love drinking lemon water. Mm, lemon lemon water is like, so oh, good. That's good so I come up with lemons, and my mom's like, are you like making something special? And I'm like, why? And she's so. I open the vegetable crisper drawer. There's two yeah. bags of lemons in there. I open the fruit drawer. There's two <laughs> bags of rotting lemons in there. <laughs> and then this other bag of lemons. And I'm like, oh, because I can't see it, which meant it was gone. It's gone. It's yeah. not there. It doesn't exist. And I know, like, still, like, I, I at, in my house, I have things on shelves in bins but the bins are open yeah. because so yeah. that you can see that it's there yeah because if it's yeah and I know too like when I put stuff in my office like people are always like oh this is a horrifying tornado of mess <laughs> like if I cannot see every single thing in here and it, like I don't know why like do you I find some things this. you're very particular about yes and then like some things you're like ah it could be messy it doesn't matter yeah and I find like like my house I like my house to be clean but my stuff has to be out. <laughs> out. Yeah, and the same in the office. Like, I like things to actually be I kind of feel like I'm the same way, actually. Yeah. You know, I try to have things, like, in organized, like, label them, and I'm just like, nah, it could just be out. Yeah. And then people are like, how do you find things? And I'm like, oh, that's that, that's over there. Like, I yeah. know where things are. Like, if someone asked you, like, oh, <clears throat> hey, do you know where the stapler is? You could be like, oh, yeah, if you go under the desk, there's, like, a pile of Kleenex, and you lift up the Kleenex, <laughs> 
and the stapler is just to the right of a piece of lint. <laughs> you see, <laughs> see, but I love that though because like I feel like your spatial, like your your visual memory of like how yeah. that looks, like yeah. we could describe it a little bit better. Because I'm very, I'm like that too. Yeah, because you guys kind of rewind, right? Yeah. You're looking at the picture, and you're just trying to like explain the picture. And I feel I don't know. I, I need to do more research because I don't know if that's part of like all the kids we have too they're always yeah. like oh hey how do you remember stuff and they're like I just look at the picture in my head or like I have like a little movie screen and I just replay the movie in my head and I kind of see it like 3D like I kind of like when I'm like okay. when I'm like hey like you know find the brush in the cabinets like I'm like actually visualing like visualizing myself doing that and like finding That's it cool and sometimes when I go in there and I try to find it, it's not there I'm like oh my god where is it so then I'm like trying to like create another yes. movie like where did it yes. go I know, yeah, when you're yeah. like, you misplaced it, or someone's moved in, and you're, and you're just like, you're like, what? Why? <laughs> it should be I know, here. And I wonder sometimes, too, if, like, the word retrieval part is because, like, I wonder if other people think in the words they want. Whereas yeah. I feel like I'm always trying to describe the pictures. Yeah, I, I feel also, I, I try to describe, like, the feeling. Like, sometimes yeah. I describe, like, the feeling of, like, the word. I know that's kind of weird. I don't know if anybody else thinks about that. No, I totally, because, like, like, the kids will ask me, like, oh, what is this word? I'm like, it's like this. <gasps> yeah. You know, like, cause you, cause it's like, that's it. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. But, like, when you're, like, anxious. I'm like, you know when you're doing an exam and you're, like, anxious? You have to, like, act it out. Yeah. I feel like I always have to act things out. Yeah. Cause I always talk with my hands. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like it's conveyed. Like, I feel like when you're talking with or, or doing stuff with other dyslexic people, it's like... You're transmitting your feelings to them. You're yeah. transmitting, and they're transmitting back to you, if that makes sense. Yeah, like, and, like, I wish there was more, like, um, I wish there was more, like, um, like scientific studies about that, yeah. like, about the brain and stuff, because I always find that so interesting, like, um, like, how, you know, when you start to fix the reading and spelling, like, what other things are fixed, or what other yeah. things are not, what are things we can improve on, um, like I know, even just like with sight words, like words that words that don't follow the English language. If everybody doesn't know that sight words, um, like I just had to like put and imagine what they look like. Like that was the only way that I could remember them is if I just was like, "This is the word," and like had that yeah. because like I took a picture and was like, "That's the word," and I had to just like visually, what does the shape look like, right? Yes, and I know like even when I like if any students <coughs> are watching this, you probably notice when I'm. When you guys are spelling your sight words, I'm like over here going like this, like because mm -hmm. I'm spelling them how I remember them. Yeah. So I'm just like, let me just hide my hands so that because I yeah. can't show the card. Yeah, but that's why I think like with memory, like I think like for me, like I, I can remember things like way back when I was like y little, right? Yeah. And then there's sometimes where it's like maybe dyslexic and your memory might not that be that great, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to work a little bit harder to improve that, right? Yeah. So. Definitely, I find, like, my like, long-term memory is so much better than my short-term memory. When someone's yeah. talking to me, like, I'm like, yes, I 100% get what you're saying, and I'm yeah. so excited, and then I wait, like, 20 minutes, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like what did we just talk about? Like, I still, and I still feel, like, jazzed, like, I'm like, yeah, that thing we discussed was great, and I, <laughs> so I always find, like, I'm constantly taking notes during yeah. conversations that are important, because yeah. I know that even though that feeling, like, the feel, like, I feel like I understood. I feel like I understand. I feel like I know what I'm doing. But I have absolutely no idea what the topic is. Right? Yeah. So I kind of, like, go and that's why I think, like, throughout time, like, I think we've had to, like, create things that helped us. Like, mm. organize. Um, like, even, I think, like, for exams and tests, like, I always had, like, huge anxiety. Like, oh, my God, do I know everything? Like, can I, can I make sure I get that test? Like, get the, the right mark that I want for that mm. test? And so, like, I would have to, like, months before people were even trying to study for tests, I was like, I need my review. And then I had to, like, highlight and, like, organize all these ways. And before, I was like, I don't even know how to do this. So it was a lot of me and my mom trying to, like, figure out mm -hmm. how that works for me, right? And how I could study. I still, to this day, don't have very good study skills. Like, if, if someone says, like, read this text, figure out what it is. Like, I have to read it, create a picture, create a model. I go experiment on myself like I have yeah. to do all these avenues and like and, and maybe that maybe that counts for like you know how severe your dyslexic is like I was profound right so like there's always a scale so like when I was in grade six I got diagnosed and I was like severely dyslexic so like trying 
anything to try and build my phonemic awareness was like impossible right and I think that that was like what program works for me and my mom like what is something that's going to work in our daily life that would benefit us and benefit me and and then that's where I feel like once we did the program I started to feel like oh my god it's actually I'm understanding right because I feel like there was so many times where like I just felt I was stupid like I couldn't learn any other way yeah you know so I think with you like I don't think that you were as severe I was always very I was always very good friends with the teachers mm. and I always if they talk to me I could tell them everything and I yeah. had the I had the good fortune to be really good at sciences I don't know why I was terrible at math terrible at English terrible at spelling but I was really good at sciences so then it kind of like that took me through like mm. I could yeah. do chemistry I could do physics I could because those were all things that you could put your hands on yeah. and do and even too maybe it was because like in you know in chemistry they have like formulas right like there's that yeah. one formula that gets and you to the answer yeah. and you can visually memorize yeah. that formula and me- memorizing the periodic table memory like I yeah. was really good at I've always been really good at whole picture thing yeah. and then like grade 11 and 12 I finally got to the point where I just I got other people to tell me about <laughs> what we were learning basically because it was the other problem too that I have is like like I said like I'd sit in class and the teacher would be talking and be like wow this is fascinating and then it would be gone yeah as soon as I left so I feel like yeah like mine definitely I feel like mine wasn't as severe because I could I could mask so much. I could mask, 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 mask. And, yeah. my, and my visual memory was good enough. And my sequencing in terms of learning has always been pretty good. I've always been able to, okay, if I want to learn this, I have to learn this. I'm definitely a person that has to learn why and not how. Yeah, I am the same way. Why? Yeah. Why yes. does this have that? I <laughs> yeah. feel like that was something as a little kid. I was always like, why? 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 <laughs> I remember driving my teachers crazy trying to learn addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Because I kept saying, like, why are we doing this? Why does this plus this equals? And they'd be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> They're like, that's not important. Yeah, just like, do it. Do it. <laughs> Especially long division. I remember I, I remember being grade seven, and I got these, like, sheets for long division that were meant for, like, grade one students. And I said, why am I adding a zero at the end? Yeah. What does this mean? And my teacher was like, just just leave. <laughs> so I just didn't do math that year. <laughs> my teacher just was like, enough. <laughs> I don't know, do you have, like, the persistence, too? Like, I feel like you're, like, you bug a person until they, like, literally lock the door and, <laughs> like, I'm like, hey, 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 hey. I feel like maybe I kind, I kind of, I feel like maybe I sometimes give up a bit easier. Um, I feel like that's something always I've, like, struggled with. Maybe it's because I, I'm a very emotional person, and I've known, like, with a lot of my students that, like, um, we're very emotional and I don't know if that's because of the trauma that we've had that's or true, is yeah. that because you know our brain just has more capacity for emotions yeah. um, but that's where that's where I feel like I'm always kind of doubting myself and I think that with the confidence of like you know what I can do this I can accomplish things and then I can kind of see like you know what I can do that and then I will change my attitude around but again it's I try to not um, I tried to not make decisions on my emotions. I tried to make it logically. And I think yeah. that that's, in the past couple of years, I really changed my perspective because I have to split them, you know? It almost, it's like sometimes I feel like it's almost like it makes you kind of behind neurotypical people in that way because I feel like you feel your own emotions so deeply and you feel other people's emotions yeah. so deeply that it almost takes you longer to get to that point because you're still... You spend so much of that of your younger years trying to separate your emotions from other people that you yeah. don't even have time to deal with, like, okay, logic over heart or whatever. Yeah, like, that makes so much sense. Yeah, and like even now, like it's still I don't th- I don't know if there's neurotypical people watching. Like, do you find that, say, you're in a large room, do you have trouble blocking out other people's emotions? Like, can that change how you feel entirely? Is that something you guys experience? Is that something that's just unique to dyslexic people that um I don't know because I find with my students there's so many characteristics where some students were like the same and we're like yeah and we're so like happy about things and sometimes like there's students where they're very quiet and Mm -hmm. you know more gentle and I feel like that's where I do have to mirror them a little bit more where I'm like okay I'm not 
crazy Kirsten right now. I got to, like, <laughs> tone it down, and, you know, and then, like, get to, the, get to their level. But that's where I think we have to adjust, mm-hmm. right? But I think I'm good at that. I'm good mm-hmm. at adjusting. Yeah. You know? There's always that connection, too. Like, yeah, I feel for like sure. We meet every single kid that we meet, no matter, like, I feel like there's, like, something happening. I don't know if it's energetically. I know, like, thoughts are quantum energy. So I'm wondering if there's, like, something happening that we're actually communicating our thoughts. Because I know, yeah. too, like, That'd we have... We have more brain mass. We have more... Yeah. What is that? I can't remember what it's called, of course. It's Neurons. Called. Neurons? No. I don't even know. It's like some... I can't remember what it is. Are those like little tentacle thingies? I'm going to look it up, and I'm going to put <laughs> a tentacle... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna it's not the tentacle thing. And now I'm thinking about... If I ha- it's on the tip of our tongue. What is yes. it? Oh, see, this is a struggle, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just like... It's in yeah, there! Big it's word. Stuck. What is it? And it's just like, no, it's gone now. And now I'm thinking about, yeah, I'm thinking about octopus. It's coming out of my brain. <laughs> All right. Well, I think but we're going to be yeah. kind of wrapping it up. Subscribe. There's yes. a like button. Yeah. I don't know how that really goes. Yeah, subscribe. So we're going to figure out how to do subscribing. <laughs> we're going to figure out how to, like, we're going to figure out how to do all the stuff this is just like the first rough version there's gonna be much more coming um if you guys have ideas feel free to um send us a message of topics you want to see we would love to do interviews with dyslexic people dyslexics we don't have a community in north america and in canada like a lot of other places do so let's let's know each other let's use our skills let's I don't know. And even in the comments below, like, put something yeah. funny, like, if you're dyslexic, put something funny that you do, or something that you've yeah. had in the past that just is like, oh, man, you just gotta laugh about sometimes, yes. right? <laughs> Let's connect our brain tentacles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.